How did you get the offer to come to America and start coaching the, 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 the teams over here? The, there are a few people who recognize me and I started to build my relationship back when I was in Bulgaria. I came um, to uh, train in, in Wisconsin with Dennis Hall, who is, later became a very successful wrestler, won the world championships um, in, in um, 95 and then later he won a, a, a silver medal at the Olympic Games and he was a bronze medalist as well. Dennis and I built a relationship and, and, and some other coaches, like the national coaching staff, recognized me and they heard that I can be helpful and um, to Greco-Roman wrestling in America. And, and um, that's how uh, the national coach of United States invited me to participate at one of the national camps. And I came as a clinician, instructor, just for a short visit. But after that visit, um, the athletes were asking about me, that I, they were telling good things, that I was effective, I was helpful, and um, that's how um, Steve Frazier started to, he's the, the national coach, former national coach at that time, um, express interest to bring me to America to help Greco. And I came and at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, uh, stayed for about year and a half and then um, I realized that I had to start working with the grassroots because I already felt like I I like this job I like coaching and wrestling I feel myself effective but at the same time I had I study the process and said I if I want to have success in this country I should not start from the highest where working with the Olympic caliber athletes I should go down to grassroots and study a little kids what's happening there and I expect accepted a, a wrestling program um, at uh, just private club in Salt Lake and I had some great success I put some kids on the world team uh, made them multiple national champions in Greco-Roman wrestling we got you to be a second uh, second um, place as a team at the junior nationals and I and then from there, my coaching journey continued to the other Olympic training center. I came back basically for, to work for USA Wrestling, but at the University of Northern Michigan, which was considered as a training site, Olympic training center, where we were offering education for these students. And that's where really my, my success um, came with uh, world-class athletes, and Olympia, Olympians, we had Olympic bronze medalists, uh, world champions in junior level, university level, senior level. Until uh, 2007, we, I say we as a Greco-Roman team, we won the first world title in the history of United States. And I was proud to be on the coaching staff with Steve Frazier and other colleagues. And um, I contributed with a bronze medal from one of my athletes from our program won bronze medal. And, and we, uh, we, we won the world title. And so that, that was amazing. What, a, what is one of the memorable journeys that you've had with, with your athletes to get, you know, to, to, I suppose, get whether it's someone winning a, a, a medal or, or, or just getting to a place that you thought was quite difficult. Do you, do you have any, any sort of uh, any stories that particularly stand out? Many, many stories I have. Um, everywhere I, I've been to these three programs that I coached. First in Salt Lake. I don't count Colorado Springs because I was just assistant coach, training partner. I was not involved fully of the program. So I don't count that first year and a half. I would just, whatever I'm needed, I still help in Greco. But these three programs like Salt Lake City, TAC Wrestling Club doesn't exist anymore. Uh, then USOEC, the Olympic Training Center in Marquette, Michigan, US Olympic Education Center in Marquette, Michigan. That's the place I mostly um, got all my big, um, uh, rewards from wrestling. I mean, that's that's the that's the highest level that I can coach because I was also involved with the USA national team. Some of my athletes made the team, 
And, uh, and then coming back to Supless with creating my own Supless Racing program and club. Um, I had so many uh, memories, especially with those athletes who follow the process, the training process that I created to have success. Those few who consistently follow, I'm so proud that some of them won national. Those who, those who actually follow, they won, not some of them. They totally, they, they won world medals, national titles, and um, that, that's, the, that's the most uh, mem memorable uh, journey, I can say. So I had great memories in all these three programs that I run so far. What do, you, what do you say, what do you think now, reflecting back and being through that journey yourself, what, what do you think, did, did, do you, or do you think that you got this recipe that providing that you, and I, and I know, I know there's, there's always sort of variables, but did, do you think you came up with a recipe that providing you followed these certain things that there's a good chance that if someone had the mindset and genetics, you could make them a, a champion? Definitely. I, I won't call it a recipe, but I understand <laughs> what you're saying. Structure and a plan. Yes, I did have this. Without this, sorry, I cannot perform because I didn't even have a chance to recruit the best athletes. I had to work with whatever I have. Of course, we're trying to recruit the best, but you, we have a huge competition. When I, I'm talking about when, you, when, you, when I recruited for Olympic Training Center, there's many other colleges also pulling kids to wrestle the American collegiate style, which is very, very competitive and has a big history and success. So to pull someone from that dream, they grew up with that to be a college wrestler and, have, and get a scholarship in one of these big programs at the university to pull him and, and, and convince him that he can be good in Greco is a big challenge. And what's, the, what's the difference between, um, like for, for those who don't know, what's the difference between Greco and, and, and regular wrestling? Greco is all upper body. We don't grab legs or below the waist. And we have some specific uh, techniques, like the suplex technique. It comes from Greco, it's all upper body. I mean, it can be used in freestyle too, but we also have another suplex, we call it back suplex. When you, when you lift your partner, just like you're sitting on this dummy, just flip it this way, you lift it, and that person wants to move and save his life because he's gonna get launched and you never know how he's gonna <laughs> land. You have to throw him over your chest. That's very specific. Where freestyle, it, it's possible to do, but they can grab your leg and you can't perform that lift. So mostly it's the, the difference between um, grabbing the legs and not be able to grab for Greco, but also American collegiate style have one specific position where you have to, they call it riding on top. So you have to keep the, your partner, your opponent down because if the partner or his opponent escapes, you lose one point as a top wrestler. And it's a mandatory position that we don't have this at the Olympic spoil, uh, 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 style Greco-Roman wrestling. So that's the, the, big, the big difference. The, the time frame of the matches, not much different, but it, also for, for um, collegiate style, those who are wrestling in university are three periods by three minutes. It takes a lot of endurance, and Greco changes the rules. International Wrestling Federation changes the rules all the time, but now they're two periods of three minutes.